Hi, before we get started, I just wanted to take a few minutes and look at a copy of the text together so I could point out some of its most important features uh, that will be used throughout the text and throughout the course. So we'll look at a relatively short uh, copy of the text containing just the front material, chapters 1 and 2, um, but it contains all of the essential features that we'll use throughout the text and the course. Okay. The first part of the text is what I would call the front matter. Uh, that is the title page, copyright information, uh, preface, and um, table of contents. Okay. And so this front material, the page numbers are indicated using lowercase Roman numerals. Okay. The first Arabic number, so number one, is going to be the first page of chapter one, the first page of content. Okay. Um, as you're looking at the PDF on your computer, I will note that I am using Document Views Viewer on Ubuntu, um, so I'm not using Windows or Mac. So if you're using Windows and Mac and using a different piece of software to view your PDF, uh, know that the hyperlinks or how it indicates that something is a hyperlink may be or may appear slightly different than you see uh, in my version. Okay. Part of the motivation for a uh, writing the text as a PDF is a PDF is universal. I expect that what I see on my computer screen here, you see on your computer screen at home or wherever you are reading it. The small differences that may happen are things like hyperlinks. Okay, Maybe uh, in your viewer, rather than boxing in a word, it just underlines it. Maybe it chooses a different color. Okay, But the differences should be very, very small. So the first page we start out at is a title page. Um, um, note the date on here. The date corresponds or indicates the date that this version of the text was compiled. Okay, So I'm writing the text in LaTeX. Uh, so if I make a change to the text, I need to recompile it. And this date indicates the date that that version was compiled. So if you have two copies of the text, one has a more recent date, uh, chances are you should be using the more recent version uh, as that would you know, suggest that I've fixed uh, any typos or bugs uh, that you may have pointed out. Okay, so I'm going to scroll through. Okay. And uh, even on the second page where it has copyright material, you'll see Cheyenne boxes. Right? This indicates a uh, link to an external resource, a link that if I click on it, it'll appear in my web browser. Okay. And so I'll continue to scroll down to my preface and we'll take a look at uh, one of these links. Okay, and so a common link is Wikipedia. So I'll uh, reference and link to Wikipedia throughout. Right? And so Wikipedia has a Cheyenne box around it. And so if I click on it, it should open up in my default browser. Okay, great. So Chrome is my default browser. I click back over to Chrome and here you are. I'm back at uh, Wikipedia. So I'm going to go back to my document. I uh, link to the Open Textbook Library. Click on the Open Textbook Library. Chrome opens up another tab uh, that brings me to Open Textbook Library. Okay, and the list goes on and on. Okay, um, I'll use screencasts throughout this text. And so here's a link to my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you click on it. Bam! There you are uh, at the front page of my YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, all opening up as new tabs by default in Chrome. Okay, so Cheyenne boxes are indicating links to external resources. Okay, okay and you know, take a look at it when you, when you begin to read the text. Um, you know, link to documentation, online tutorials offered by MATLAB, etc. If I go to the table of contents, the other type of hyperlinking that you'll see is not to an external uh, resource or web page, but is to something within the document. So a red box is indicating a hyperlink or a link to material contained within the text. Okay. So if I look at the table of contents, if I want to go to chapter 1, section 1.7 on errors, I can click on it in the table of contents and I'm there. Okay, Excellent. Okay. You'll also notice in my viewer, okay, if I look at the left, okay, uh, in terms of the outline of the PDF, I have at present, remember my 
version that we're looking at contains just the front material chapters one and two. Okay, I tag um, the chapters. Then within each chapter, I have a tag for each section. Okay, and so um, you should be able to get an outline view like this in your viewer that you can use to navigate around. Okay, so if I click on chapter two, I'm in chapter two. Um, if I want to go to section 2.12 CPP examples, uh, there I am. Uh, and in this example, you'll see I also reference an example from chapter one. All right, and so these red boxes indicate hyperlinks to previous material. So I click on it within a problem, right, and I'm linked back to example 1.5. So take advantage and use hyperlinking. Um, it's meant to uh, give you the feels if I had created an HTML version of the text, a website, um, but uh, offered in the convenience of a PDF document. Okay, so hyperlinking is used throughout. Beginning in chapter two, okay, um, or you know, always, right? When we look at a new feature, I try to link to the MATLAB documentation. Okay, so there's a link just to you know, the main documentation page. But when I introduce a script, right, um, I link directly to the script page within MATLAB's documentation. So I click on it, you know, and it brings me right to MATLAB's documentation page um, with all the information you could possibly want to know about scripts. Okay, so the text doesn't, in, I have no intention of the text being some um, all-inclusive resource. Um, but um, the MATLAB documentation is incredible, and so I try and link to it whenever possible. Um, okay. The other thing I will point out is if I look at examples, okay, so here's a, you know, section 2.12 CPP examples. Okay. So I, okay, for most of the examples, um, I will offer a screencast that you could view of me solving the problem. Okay, so if I look at example 2, 4, uh, here's the problem statement. Okay, um, uh, I'll point out that often I like to give the numerical answer or the answer of the example uh, problem. Uh, that way you can work through the problem and get it right before you peek at my solution, which I provide below. But at the beginning of the solution, I'll provide a link to a screencast. Okay, well, I'll provide a link to to two things, okay? Um, first would be a link to a screencast with my solution, okay? And I will note that um, when you view my screencast, the solution on the screencast may be different than what I present in the solution in the text. And why they may be different is what the screencast is, is me looking through, looking at the problem statement on the spot and then trying to genuinely solve it. Okay, so my solution may differ because I'm trying to solve the problem there in the moment and also offer my commentary uh, to try and help you master the course material. Okay. But as a Cheyenne link, right, and as a Cheyenne, or it's a Cheyenne box because it's a hyperlink to uh, YouTube link. So if I click on it, all right, it'll link to the YouTube video uh, here on my uh, YouTube Next channel. Two okay. we'll chapter two. Cool. Um, Okay, so let me pause it uh, so you're not uh, hearing that. Okay, so there's the video. So what I you know, just mentioned is the solution in my screencast may differ slightly than the answer presented in the book. Okay, um, and so what I've done is in this description of the YouTube video, I provide a link to uh, my Google Drive account where you can download uh, the end file that I just uh, wrote in the screencast. Right? So you can just download and you can have a copy of the file for yourself. Okay, so within the screencast, if you look in the documentation, if I create an M file, so there won't be any M files in chapter one, this is beginning in chapter two. If I write a program uh, in MATLAB in that screencast, um, I'll provide links so that you can download that M file, and have the exact copy I just wrote. Okay, excellent. Okay, so now if I scroll past solution, okay, so you know, besides the screencast, I'll try and type up a solution. Okay, 
Um, and in my solution, you'll see these listing environments throughout the text. So listing environment is just displaying the contents of an M file saved on my computer. Okay, so listing 2.5, okay, uh, here's the name of my M file. Okay, so that's the name of my M file. Uh, and then it's displaying its contents. You'll notice that the name is circled in Cheyenne. Okay, so if I click on it, it's a hyperlink. It's a link to, I have a copy of that M file stored in my Google Drive that you can readily download. So if I click on it, right, it'll bring you to a copy of the file saved in my Google Drive that you can download and then open up uh, with MATLAB. Okay, excellent. Okay, when I click on it and it opens up in the browser, uh, it's just black and white. Uh, that's because it's using a um, you know, default viewer uh, in Chrome. Okay, so if I want to download um, uh, the end file that you're seeing, right, the title is the name of the file. It's a hyperlink that'll bring you to a copy to download um, on my Google Drive. Okay. Um, you know, these Cheyenne links, these are links to uh, web pages. Uh, so at the beginning of my solution, if it's available, it's not available for all examples, it's available for most to, um, um, if you click on it, it'll bring you to a link of the video on my YouTube channel. Here, I'm just going to pause it. Next to it. Okay. Um, the example um, or my solution on the screencast may differ slightly from uh, what's presented in the text. If you look at the details, so I just click show more, um, I provide a link so you can download the exact files I create. Right, so if I try and skip ahead, right, so here I am working on a file Antoine P. Calc, uh, dot M, right, and that would be made available for download. I believe in this case it's the first link uh, would bring you to Antoine P. Calc. Dot M. Right, and so you could download the exact file uh, that I'm working on in the screencast. And then again in the text, it's me trying to type up a solution. Um, and I provide a link to uh, that version of the file. The screencast is me genuinely solving the problem on the spot, uh, more like you might see in a face-to-face -face in classroom setting where someone can ask a question, hey, Professor Pluch. You know, how might you solve uh, this problem if you're working on this at home? I say, all right, here we go. That's exactly what you see in the screencast. Okay, okay. and so those are the uh, main essential features. Um, so look out for hyperlinking throughout. I like to link to um, the documentation. The documentation is invaluable. Um, I'm learning a lot of example problems. Um, what I tend to do is keep bringing up the same example problems from chapter to chapter. They build on each other. Uh, and so I'll link to other resources in the text um, that you can look back at uh, and refer. Uh, when we get to numerical methods, I link to Wikipedia a lot. Um, it, if you want to gain more insight into um, you know, the actual numeric methods, um, Wikipedia contains more information. And Wikipedia, like this text, uh, is free and, and readily available. Okay, yeah. Excellent. And so if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, uh, please let me know. Uh, but hopefully, you know, this at least uh, gives you some uh, insight into uh, the hyperlinking used throughout, and hopefully you take full advantage of it uh, while working through the course.